Star Wars 7x7 episode 2806. So today was the big Disney annual shareholders meeting day and the fireworks happened elsewhere on social media because surprise, surprise, not only did Entertainment Weekly announce their final print issue cover story was going to be featuring Obi-Wan Kenobi with some exclusive images and interesting captions, they also dropped a teaser trailer for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and we're going to break it all down here. Punch it! Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So what a day yesterday, March 9th was when we got the Entertainment Weekly photos in the morning and we got the teaser trailer in the afternoon. Very exciting stuff. And the Entertainment Weekly thing, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, that's a cover story, so that means there's going to be articles going along with it and usually they release those online piecemeal. So over the next few days, we're probably going to be hearing more about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series from Entertainment Weekly. But yeah, let's focus on the teaser trailer and enhance it, if you will, with the stuff that we learned from the Entertainment Weekly breakdown. And I'm going to approach this from a slightly different angle. I'm going to talk about the planets that we've seen and use that as our focal point or focal points, if you will. First of all, there is a shot in space of two, you know, possibly escape pod looking things flying away from a ship and it's happened so fast, it's so blinking you'll miss it that you know, we don't see a heck of a lot for that. But I'm really looking forward to seeing some frame by frame breakdowns, especially from the Star Wars ship experts out <laughs> in the world. So that's not exactly a planet, so we'll call it a location, all right, we'll do that. A second location, <laughs> if you will, which is a planet, is NUR. That's N-U-R. And if you are familiar with the game Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, then this will be familiar to you. This is the home of the Fortress Inquisitorius, which is where all of the Inquisitors are hanging out. So we see a ship flying toward that you know, giant structure coming out of an ocean. And then we see an underwater conference room and Reva, who is our primary villain, talking to a couple of other Inquisitors in that conference room. That is all happening on Nur. And the other thing to know about Nur is that it is in the Mustafar system. So Mustafar has a number of planets in its system of which Mustafar the planet is one and Nur is another one. So it's in the same system as Darth Vader's home planet. And it's not exactly clear whether we're seeing the back of the Grand Inquisitor or if we're seeing the back of someone like maybe the fifth brother in that conference room scene. But then there's somebody off on the left as well. And then, of course, we've got Reva and then, you know, potentially this Grand Inquisitor. But it looks like we may have as many as four Inquisitors showing up in this series, which is just mind blowing. So that's what I've got for you about Nur. Then I believe that we are seeing a separate planet entirely where Indira Varma shows up as an Imperial officer. It looks like she's walking out of a ship, but they don't give us enough of the scene to see what kind of ship she's walking out of. But the background behind her, it's blurry and yet it does not look like Tatooine. It looks like it has vegetation. It has some sort of small trees or scrub. And so that does not seem like Tatooine. Tatooine, and that doesn't seem like Dayu, which is the other new location that we get to see in this teaser trailer. So yes, third location is a mystery, potential, entirely separate location. Fourth location is this place, Dayu. So this is a brand new planet being introduced in the Star Wars galaxy. And according to Joby Harold, speaking to Entertainment Weekly, he says it's kind of got a Hong Kong gritty vibe to it. And it's an entirely different lane from what's been done before. It does kind of have a feel like what we see in Attack of the Clones when Obi-Wan and Anakin are hunting for Zam Wessel, but maybe a little you know darker grittier a little more almost you know Blade Runner LA 2029 kind of look to it and Obi-Wan's on this planet with you know what appears to be all four Inquisitors there's a scene where an Inquisitor is shown you know leading a bunch of troops down the street and that one does not look like our Grand Inquisitor the chest plate is different so yeah got to be a fourth Inquisitor for sure as a result 
Since there's a firefight that happens on Dayu, it's a little bit tough to say for sure that it's Obi-Wan Kenobi who's under fire, but it sure does look like it. He's being fired upon from two different directions, and he is only using a blaster. And there's another scene where Reva, the Inquisitor, is facing down a shadowy someone with a blaster in an alleyway. And you get the idea, potentially, that maybe Obi-Wan is using a blaster, not using a lightsaber to try not to draw attention to himself as a potential Jedi, which that means at some point he's going to have something to say about how uncivilized blasters are. And Dayu is one of two places that we get a good look at the face of the Grand Inquisitor. The other place, of course, is on Tatooine. It looks like he shows up there as well, and it looks like maybe multiple Inquisitors are on Tatooine too. So before we get to talking about Tatooine as the final location that we'll talk about, let's take a moment to talk about the Grand Inquisitor, who's played by Rupert Friend in this, who does not appear to be, and sorry for the pronunciation, a Powin. It's a you know, species Species of character from Utapau, which is the planet that we see in Revenge of the Sith, where Obi-Wan has his final showdown with General Grievous. That is the species of the Grand Inquisitor that we meet in Star Wars Rebels, and we've seen an a Powin, excuse me, <laughs> in live action in Revenge of the Sith as well. So he has similar markings on his face to what the Grand Inquisitor has in Rebels, but it doesn't appear to be a Powan unless there are, you know, multiple types of Powans that have different, you know, physicality to them. But A, it occurs to me that it doesn't have to be just one person who's ever held the title of Grand Inquisitor, so maybe this was the Grand Inquisitor prior to the events of Star Wars Rebels. I suppose that's possible. Also, it's just possible that this is how they have imagined the Grand Inquisitor for the Kenobi series, and it is the same Inquisitor as Rebels. We don't know yet. I think, you know, the jury's out on it, but... Oh, yeah, it, it does seem like, you know, an unusual you know, casting, or not casting decision, but what, costuming decision or creature department decision to, you know, do that character in a way that, you know, doesn't seem to imitate Rebels when they did, you know, such a good job getting so close with Cad Bane in live action. So, yeah, we'll have to see how that plays out. So now that we've set the stage with the Grand Inquisitor, let's talk about that final location, Tatooine, and the voiceover from the Grand Inquisitor that consumes much of the real estate in the trailer. So he talks about how the key to hunting Jedi is patience, and he goes on to say they cannot help who they are, their compassion leaves a trail, the Jedi code is like an itch, and finally, a he, presumably Obi-Wan Kenobi, but maybe not known exactly to them at the time, cannot help it. And so you get the idea that somehow the Inquisitors have gotten word of events that seem to make them think a Jedi is doing something on Tatooine. They go to Tatooine and we see you know, something rather shocking, like we see heels dangling, so there's been some kind of hanging that's happened, or maybe somebody is being lifted in a force choking thing or something. So somebody is trying to get Obi-Wan to come forward and you know, be a hero as the Jedi Code would want them to be. I mean, yeah, the Jedi Code doesn't necessarily want them to be heroes, but they want them to, you know, intercede and protect people, right? So you get what I mean. And part of the crowd witnessing these actions, Uncle Owen, Joel Edgerton is in the crowd, and there is an additional photo in the Entertainment Weekly releases where he is face-to-face -face with Reva, the main villain inquisitor for the series. Now, of course, we know he's going to survive this encounter. That doesn't necessarily make it any less tense, but still... Yeah, the, the Inquisitors somehow have a sense that Obi-Wan Kenobi or some Jedi is on Tatooine. And so you get the idea that, you know, we've talked about how we knew that it was going to be on Tatooine and then Obi-Wan was going to go off on quote unquote a rollicking adventure. But what that would look like, we didn't know. Right now, we're almost getting the impression that with the Inquisitorious on Tatooine, Obi-Wan Kenobi's reasoning for leaving the planet might be to try to lead the Inquisitorious away from Luke Skywalker. And oh my goodness, <laughs> oh the heart thrills to see a 10-year-old Luke Skywalker climbing up 
on the top of the entryway of his hut and with goggles on pretending to be pod racing. At least that's what it looked like to me. Oh, and there is one thing I forgot. Uh, I'll circle back around to it, but you know, that's basically <laughs> the, the Tatooine situation in a nutshell. And that is the whole of our rapid fire trailer breakdown in a nutshell as well. The thing that I didn't mention in the NUR section of things was that the Fortress Inquisitorious, they also take Jedi there to be tortured and presumably executed as well. And Sir Junda, who is the you know, mentor to Cal Kestis in Jedi Fallen Order, um, and I'm saying mentor, she might end up being his master. I just haven't played it through, so I don't know for sure. But anyway, Sir Junda was actually held prisoner there at some point and escaped. And there's a mission where they actually have to go break into it for some reason. But the events of Jedi Fallen Order take place five years prior to the events of the Kenobi series. So hard to say whether the Jedi Fallen Order stuff is going to play a role in it in terms of anything that happened in there showing up in the Kenobi series. But the fact that they've got that fortress and they're referencing that planet is pretty cool. So they're tying in the video games, they're tying in animation, and who knows what else they're going to be tying into the series. It's very awesome. So there you go. All right, that really is it for this episode of the show today. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items, are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders, may the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.